Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <laughs> Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> Dire team ban. Hello everybody and welcome to more We Play. This is the last of the European games. Radiant Post and last team. of the European games today. Depending on how you define Europe. They call in Europe and CIS something different. Either way, no more rambling from me. I'm Llama Down Under, joined by Mart Pax. Prius versus Advenem. Who are you calling it? Right now, Mart. Oh, right now? Uh, right now. Advenem. <laughs> they are looking really strong right now, Advenem. I don't know... <sighs> I hate I hate the tier thing because you know tier one I wouldn't quite say Adpenum is there yet but they have taken some games off of some pretty dang big names and then to add into the mix the fact that London Conspiracy has been beating out Adpenum pretty solidly but London Conspiracy unable to beat Empire like I just I don't know are they one point five are they two Ugh, it's hard it's it's a pretty murky scene right now you know we got um with the whole advent of the majors and the fact that if you don't make the majors you end up swapping your team around everyone's just trying to find this one thing that works so it's 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 kind of morphed into like there's a tier of like made it to the majors and then there's just this pool of people like do we want to compete in this tournament do we want to remake to try and like get ready for the next major and so we end up with this kind of uh it's definitely not as defined as it used Ten to be you know seconds, where everyone was just getting invited after event after event kind of a deal so um they, yeah I think the draft, a lot of that is just europe's really strong yeah, that, that as well. Like, uh, a lot more people coming to the scene, you know, more talent injected is kind of opening up stuff a little bit more. So, uh, this one opening up a little bit differently than everything else today. So, this will be our first lone druid, having not made it through any of the other drafts. Not too shocking there. Um, obviously considered one of the best heroes right now. And then as well, the invoker still left in the pool here. The vengeful spirit, the first phase faces void ban it's a little unusual but it's also kind of nice because it opens up more of these like topper tier heroes like he's he still is probably the best offlaner and if you're gonna take your first pick Got on the team. lone druid then you have him available for your own offlane and then you deny that for priests so i like this opening here from fnm so far yeah, it's also something where a lot of the tier 2 teams really love picking themselves up the od it's like super popular among like as an early pickup among some of these European teams because we see a lot of them um, and I w I'm not surprised by the ban out there. The early pickup in the Lone Druid, interesting and I actually need to check because ZVY, I have no idea how I'm going to say that one, he's going to be called <laughs> Stev for right now. I go Normally that. Skylock is on ad for them, so I am not sure if this is a replacement or whatever. So. Yeah, I'm not sure um, if it's a, a sub, because uh, he has the tag, so it's not a standard. Yeah, he has the tag, so it could also just be Skylock changed his name. You never, you never know. Yeah, that's true. I, uh, I had not followed up with that one, but uh, man. Please. I think it's important to note, just because Skylock's hero pool is... Uh, for what they pick him, it always seems really limited. They only pick Skylock a few heroes, so I'm not sure if uh, that will be affecting them. Yeah, I think um, it should be... Like, this next pick's pretty crucial. Like, you can get Bane, obviously very important for the Lone Druid pulls. I think the Invoker's the pick here. Um, but they're just going to open right up with the Ursa. Radiant wow. That is something else. They really wanted up against the Lone Druid Bear. It's interesting. You go, like, the Orb of Venom. It's one of the better ways you can at least counter the Bear in lane. But this leaves still the Venge. Really great for kiting the Ursa. Pretty decent up against the Bane, just for, like, um, the range of, like, the swap. And having two things available in between swap and Magic Missile for the uh, Fiend's Group. And uh, just good synergy between Bear and Venge, but they will grab the Chen. Man, there are so many good heroes Radiant left. Chen, Venge, back. Invoker. And they're going to keep it up just by Dyer banning the Bounty Hunter and leave back. all these big heroes in the pool. Yeah, we. Th this is a unconventional draw, to say the least. The O's are coming out so early. There's actually quite a few options here, especially in this 
part of the scene. A lot of these European teams will sometimes run the Ursa mid and it can actually be super strong. Or of course put in the safe lane and can be used to take down the bear pretty quickly although if Savage Roar comes out. Marana being the next ban up, this is all over the place. <laughs> Just uh, ensuring the Chen's gonna have a good time. Don't yeah. want the arrow killing a creep, don't want the bounty hunter dealing with him as well. And now though, with the Viper ban out, it's definitely looking good for the Invoker mid. Really the only thing left would be the, the uh, Death Prophet, which is also, I mean Death Prophet or Invoker Advanim would be very happy with right now. So you Both don't really have... Both teams happy with Invoker, yeah, right? Yeah, honestly, like the Bane Ten plus Sunstrike right. obviously going to be coming into play. And Priests love their Bane. It's by far their most picked hero. It's something that they would always love to grab in the first phase. Even if there's not the Lone Druid, it just happens to be really great this game. But uh, they're actually just going to go with the Puck, someone who can survive against both Death Prophet and Invoker. I'm really happy. We saw... I, I really enjoy seeing Puck. I do feel that he is a... the right way to say it. He's a strong hero in the right hands. I don't super like that phrase, but obviously this hero can do a lot of work with a player who's familiar with him. Just because of the way Dota is, there aren't going to be, you know, so many players who have super high tier experiences with the Puck, but I love seeing new teams trying him out, and I feel like on this patch, no, I feel like, the Puck has been picked more on this patch, instead of just Puck being occasionally picked by S4. Alright, a random balls. person in chat is confirming it's Skylark, good enough for me. Okay, okay, we'll take that, we'll trust <laughs> we'll this one we'll person random, we don't know. Random person. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm down with that. No, I, I I was assuming it was him. I don't I, I might even have him on my friends list because I try to add the people to cost their games in open qualifiers, but like I just saw this name and I'm like, what is this? And I didn't ask in the lobby for some stupid reason, so Oh uh, yeah, he said the yeah, so if you go like that Dota or Track Dota, yeah, it is the him. same. Yeah, Yay. Cool. Yay for Track Dota, thank you. So Venge gonna be the pickup at Venom. This could just be an early lineup. I mean Sven is still in the pool, Jug's still in the pool, Advenom looking to get that easy kind of not easy, but easier to execute. Hey, we just kinda group up around the ten minute mark and goodbye towers. Yeah, I mean they have the death problem pick still open to them. There's no way I mean, highly unlikely the priests want to snag it up here. They can also just grab the Invoker. This looks terrifying. Uh, your game plan is already telegraphed extremely early from Priest. It's the fact that you're trying to frame up an Ursa and you're going to be taking Roshan. So now, now what? You know, like <laughs> if if you try and take Roshan this early up against Advem, first off, you have to try and get farmed up against Chen and Lone Druid. So you're getting the pressure of the creeps onto your Ursa. But if you try and take Roshan, you're just going to be losing a lot of control on your map. Like they're going to be going through your jungle, they're going to be warding up, they're going to be taking at least one tower for it. And there, that's one of the rare options that we don't get to see too often anymore. It will be the Keeper of the Light trying to hold on the push. This is like what I do when I see like in a pub where you're like, oh my god, these guys have just done Roshan level one the past ten games in a row. Someone put Keeper of the light you know <laughs> we gotta do something about this so it's gonna be their one potential saving grace here for the side of priest i'm trying desperately to remember because i think it's actually advenum i don't think it's prius but i'm not 100 percent sure there is a team right now in the scene who really enjoys picking up both the night stalker and the keeper of the light there's actually still space for it on prius and a lot of people think it's super counterintuitive because of course coddle if he gets that ags wants it to be daytime but Often your Coddle doesn't get an Ags, and it's going to be Invoker from Team Advanum. <laughs> That's scary. still, I mean, it's still a great lineup like you talked about. Coddle, Puck, Bane, all of them will be very susceptible to Sunstrikes, and even the Ursa, because it's pure damage, it can do a lot to him. You, like, you have to ban out Jug here, but even if you ban out Jug, they could just, like, you could go back for a safe lane Nature's Prophet would be equally insane here for them. They can still go for the Sven just to have the War Cry. Um, not that important up against that lineup. Clearly a ton of magical damage. Yeah, they'll ban the Jug. There's really no other question here. That would just be way too much. Um, but what if they just went back for a Drow, honestly, for Advanim yeah. right now? Like, what are you going to do? They could pick a safe lane Beastmaster. Oh, that would be so good. Give me that. That's That's what I want right now. There's so many options. They can even go for another support if they feel like it and run the carry Venge who doesn't ready. suffer here because she's buffing up the Chen Creeps and Lone Druid Summon. Five seconds. Oh, <laughs> I like so Advenom's draft. And uh, <laughs> they said in the lobby, Pwn said it would be a 10 minute game and uh, maybe maybe that's what he was predicting. So Yeah, not, not the side that he wants it to be 10 minutes for though, I don't think. They need like... Uh, it's so risky like you kind of think do we go for like a tide hunter try and break this like crack it wide open with one big ravage but are those cooldowns going to be too much do you have to go for a dark seer someone who can use the iron shells try and do decent in this lane try and slow down whatever sort of a push or a core they're going to have uh oh man this is hard like typically you want uh, maybe like an ember spirit or something for priests right now something that can be farming up during the push something that can be potentially on a timer 
But Ursa, not a timer. Puck, not a timer. Like, I almost feel like they have to throw this puck into the off lane and pick something up like a, like a Amber yeah. Spirit or a Morphling or something. I'm concerned because I was thinking maybe they can go for something like the Viper on Prius just ensure that they win the mid lane, right? Maybe stop the Invoker from getting off to a good start. But it just doesn't convert into enough. And as you said, they need something that can convert that can be like we saw in the first game of the day where the Ember ended up getting huge off the back of a couple kills, managed to make it work mid. But that was so different. That was Jug versus Ember mid. The Ember got a lot more leeway against an Invoker. Even though Invoker's traditionally a weak laner, Ember will have trouble. And then not to mention Chen might just put a tornado there. okay yeah they needed something they just have to fight like there's no choice anymore you, you don't have the space to go back for this you'd have to like shoehorn your draft so hard so uh dark seer would have been good but i like the phoenix too just that early egg they need team fight because that's the only way you win this game you have no other choices left uh by the way you've been drafted in and my god the options here drow still really good um juggernaut would have been like the greatest ever obviously with the spin uh to dispel the fire spirits and then you can kill the egg so if you guys ever want to win against in Phoenix, that's what you do. They are just not. I mean, Five I'm not sure, remaining. as you said, that Phoenix will be enough, but at least it's something. It should help them delay the push. Egg does have a pretty long cooldown 110 seconds, so there are windows there where Admin can get a lot done. <laughs> what if they just like go dazzle right now and just go Corvan? No, that's what I. That's what I thought. That I'm like. You have so many options here for Advenim. They could go for the Dazzle. They could go for something like the Oracle. Um, they, I think they've just got... the best, honestly. Like oh, a little bit of OG style. Actually. Yeah, and I like. I mean, Spirit actually. That is part of how they got their run into the Shanghai Mages. It is going to be the carry bench, and this works too, right? Disruptor going to make sure that Phoenix has to be very careful, has trouble getting away, and also should find them a lot of early pickoffs before they push towers. Oof. This is uh, a little bit scarier than the side of Reese. It's just not your conventional lineup. It's a lot harder to see how they win. It doesn't mean that it's like over. Like this isn't a total outdraft just because F and M are so ridiculously meta and Priests have these kind of different heroes. It's it's certainly not game over right now. It's just it's a lot harder to visualize because we've seen these heroes hundreds of games this patch lone druid chen ventral spirit invoker disruptor this is like the dream uh, whereas it's a lot harder to visualize how this ursa is going to end up working out like can he get a little bit aggressive can he get an early enough Ten blink can he remaining. you know be dove at level six pop the enrage and kill three heroes Five there's so many remaining. variables here but by far the burden of execution here has got to be on the side of priest like this one bad egg and that might just be the end of your early game <laughs> it's also just it's like Ah, it's so terrifying because this Coddle is going to get beaten up. Also, he looks super old. What is going on here with Coddle? Oh, it's like a super old man set. Okay, well, we'll look at Coddle's <laughs> He looks like Lone face. Druid. What the hell? Yeah, he, it's because like, it's got cosmetic? a ponytail. It's not a ponytail. I don't know what that technical term for that is. It's a very it high bun. It's like a bun. Yeah. Oh, it's got, it's a, it's an Asian hairstyle. And like, I just don't have any idea what it's called. Um, but it's a very high bun, very high. It's uh, helping elongate the Coddle speech. But either way, this Coddle, even if he maxes Illuminate, right? This game, they could be defending their tier 3s before he has 4 levels in Illuminate. With the lineup Advenim have. Oof. Yeah, oof is exact. I just don't know what you do. <laughs> How do you stop this Chen? I don't know. It's... So much of the game, like Spartan could just win this game outright, honestly. Additionally, just rolls up to a lane. Yeah, oh, and something funny about the Spartan, let me talk about this. So, the Spartan, I remember I was casting a game of him and he picked the Chen, and this was when this patch dropped, he picked the Chen, right? Because the Chen was very good when this patch dropped. A lot of good changes to jungle creeps. So Spartan on the Chen, when the patch first came out, he was awful. Like, no <laughs> game impact. It was horrible. And I remember being like, wow, I guess Advenim probably won't pick it again. Because for a lot of these teams, they scrim so much, it's really hard to find time to learn new heroes because of just how much time you have to expend. These are teams that aren't able to play it professionally. You know, I was talking to the guys on Complexity who live in a team house. They have every Things sorted for them they do not have to work another job and they have trouble finding time to learn new heroes up to the caliber of comp competitive play and then so spot and lo and behold like a week and a half later i see him playing the chen and he's wrecking faces so i know this guy is good at it i know they work hard i 
I'm just like, I don't know what you do against this Chen here. You don't have something like the Bounty Hunter that was banned out to kind of roam and deal with it. You might be able to use Bane to nightmare the scary creeps coming at you, but there are a lot of creeps that are going to be coming for your face. Oof. I just, uh, yeah. I I can't even do any more analysis on this, honestly, because it's just going to be like, this is like new ground right here. Okay. What are we Prius. for Prius if they, let's say... Phoenix doesn't get too contested out of lane. That's another thing to talk about, right? Phoenix, do you have fallback jungling? I mean, they have glimpse, right? So it's just like, there's no way that sh the bird should be able to lane at all. It's just like a Darkseer. Just the, you put the Thunderstrike on top, and then she swoops away, and then you just kind of glimpse them right back into a troll trap. So if they want to put the effort into shutting down the Phoenix, it's not going to be hard in the slightest. Uh, and in terms of jungling fallback, it's okay with the stacks. It's been harmed a bit more thanks to the uh, the buff, obviously, to the jungle creeps where they ended up getting these little cloak ores and everything. So you can probably only farm maybe two stacks at once if you're lucky. Like, if you have two or three points in the fire spirits. Oh, good luck. I will be very, um, I'll apparently, be impressed as to how this works out. Apparently Cottle's hairstyle is called a top knot in English. That is not the term I was looking for. My ancestors will be ashamed of me. Oh well. They're already ashamed of me. It's not great. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, we are going to be seeing Bear Man already headed out. They placed an early ward. Prius actually, when they are radiant, they like to place a ward here. We'll see if Advenem... Oh, they've already placed those actually. So this is another good spot. I am not 100% sure if this blocks the spawn camp. It might actually uh, block that one this pool. There. It's right it's down really the middle. Close. You're right. It's right down the middle of this rock, is how I remember. So I'm not sure if it's on the right or the left of it there, but it's very close. We'll see in a second whether it blocks it. Phoenix does put out an early board, but they've seen it all because yeah, they were there dead. first. So goodbye and lots of experience for whoever eats this battle. I'm thinking they're going to the mid. <laughs> I let Thug come over and get it. Uh, oh, so are they? Great. Are they actually? Yeah. Oh my goodness. They give this him is... the full, so he'll be level two. Yeah, this is actually fantastic. If he gets this and the rune, he starts at level two. Uh, we don't see these plays maybe super often, but these are just the little things that really separate teams out. Now it's time for the dive. The dive steal. It's so risky though. I don't know if Pono. No, no he's not there's even no go way for it. No, he's not even like you. You gotta practice that. They know. Look at look at maybe he's like, mm -mm, not this time. Is. Maybe next time. Yeah, so they will be getting their thug already up at level two. That is just gonna make life even harder for this puck. How does this mid matchup go? The puck versus the invoker. Uh, it kind of with the new X it's not as bad. Like the Quas Wex um, seems to give you a little bit rougher time, but it can be hard once like the Forge Spirits come out. Obviously, you can only phase shift uh, every once in a while here. It's I'd say it's fairly even, honestly. I don't see much of an advantage. It'll just be about the rotations, really. They have a shitty wizard. I like it. But yeah, the Forge Spirit's already out. We'll have to see. <laughs> Full rotation. Bane smoked up to gank someone can be really powerful. I'm not sure how much Coddle will bring <laughs> to this business. All right, that Forge Spirit is like completely brutal early. I forgot he was yeah. level two. That's yep, huge. Yep, he already has it. So Phoenix as well, taking a lot of damage here. Oh, this is not fun. Phoenix already down to 150 health. Only came to lane with a Ring of Protection and the Tango already taking another Thunder Strike. This lane for the Phoenix, uh, it's going to be a rough one to say the least. And they don't, they, I guess they didn't get the pull off. Uh, Isn't it blocked? From Skylark? Right. No, 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 for uh, the Lone Druid, like, he didn't get the full oh. wave full. Yeah, I did not see whether he managed to use bear manipulation tactics to get it, but they have denied some of the creeps. Coddle also is getting some farm on here, using the Illuminate to help clear the creeps. They're gonna come in and see it now, but already the Coddle has hit level 2, so that's already a win. And the Hadoken goes through onto the bear. Gadrox coming through, gonna, I guess it's bear on bear action. Because Ursa is also a bear, so I'll have to say Lone Druid summon Alfredo. I think he needs the Orb of Venom though. It's just like, it's so good up against Lone Druid. You just tag that bear once, then he can't return it to him. You can consistently stack the Fury Swipes on top. Look at the Jedrock. Yeah, he's finding this bear. Yeah. Oh, he Savage just Roll okay, does good. come out, and he's gonna he's gonna get it. And this is the power of the Osa against the Lone Druid. You have better potential of killing off. Oh, okay, Sunstrike gonna be off the mark right next to Pwn in good that juice. bottom lane. Oof. Yeah, he Hogwood. knew. Although at the same time, Madara is actually really low in this lane. I'm a little bit surprised. KYH coming through on the Bane. 
does have brain sap at the ready and a DD, so we'll just sap up some experience here. Game plans. Okay, we kind of talked it to death a little bit. We expect Ad for them to do the push. For Prius, obviously, stay alive is kind of one of them. What else can you do? Should you rotate your Drox into the jungle, like force him to get early life steal so that your supports can get levels? It's kind of on Mastermind, honestly. Like, we again, it's all about this puck snowballing and. Uh, if he's throwing up these sun strikes in the side lanes, it's a little bit harder to whittle down Mastermind. You expect Puck to have the advantage in terms of CS most of the time, just because it's one of the you know one of the better heroes for this, just for getting all your lasses in the mid lane. But it's going to be rotations on the kills because you do have a core bench. So early on into the game, there's definitely the potential for Mastermind to get some of these kills. And if he can set a fast enough tempo, maybe they can win it. Um, uh, it might also, be our first kill bot, though. Oh, Maybe. yeah, we got some action. KYH, he goes down to the auto attacks, and uh, Pwn actually throwing some back. I think wanting to get one of the creeps there, but will not have any follow up. And Chen, that's what Chen does. They can even do an early push in this bottom lane if they're so inclined. Yeah, like, what? I guess you can potentially pull the, some of the creeps off the tower, but of course, being a Chen, uh, you can't get them all, so. Again, uh, Skylark just not getting enough of this lone drone. He, I mean, he's level 4, so he's still farming the camp, but it's uh, because of the threat of the bear as well, um, with the overvenom and everything, he can't do these cheeky little pulls. He's not able to bring over the wave, so not getting as much farm as you expect from your lone druid, and it's hard enough to get the timing right on this hero right now. Like, everyone wants Midas into Radiance, uh, so they definitely have a little bit of a nice window here from Priest that if the rest of the lanes aren't going too crazy well, they might be able to sneak in that early Roshan, and keep this game, I, I would say, more even than one might expect coming out of the draft. Yeah, already, they're doing good work. I like that they've put, oh, there's a magic missile out on KYH. There's going to be a glimpse backwards. KYH suddenly in a bad spot. This Bane doesn't have the brain sap, takes the sunstrike, but it's not enough. Suddenly, Madara taking a lot of damage. Oh, no, the Phoenix gets Hadouken. And Madara, it doesn't even look like, oh, my goodness. Seta, I think they just saved yeah. his life. That unholy or a six health regen, that is so frustrating. What do you do against that? Like, Sados, Sados win this game. Chen is just like so ridiculous right now. This hero. I don't know. I, I, I don't think if you don't have like an Enchantress pick ready or a Gyrocopter or the Witch Doctor or some combination of those, you it, it can be exactly. hard. I, I just don't think there's a good counter. Like, as you said, there you, you need a lot. I don't even think Witch Doctor is that great. I mean, he's good for diving, but you still don't kill the Chen creeps. So, like, maybe you get lucky and it bounces on the Chen, and maybe you pick him off, like, once or twice. But if you don't have, like, this faceless void in the offlane, which is one of the reasons why he's just so valued, there's few heroes that can actually stand up against it. Now, Coddle has managed to get himself level 4 at 5 minutes in. This is actually pretty dang good for a support, although this is leaving Lone Druid in a lot of trouble. Oh gosh, not Lone Druid, sorry, Ursa. That was a nice juke coming out from him. He's gonna go for the bear, he'll heal up a little bit, and now he gets to fight the Lone Druid, the Sunstrike, and a new bear, and a Root. Okay, Skylock, uh, getting some good RNG there. Easy. Easy is game, the right? gold, the gold from the bell? Crap, we missed a kill on the Phoenix down bottom, but it looks like they just managed to go on him again. The gold from the bear is not reliable, right? Oh, there's a mid dream coil. They managed to kill the invoker. <laughs> Thug going down. That's a huge kill for most of mine. Finally getting Prius on the board. All right. Well, this is what they need, right? They need Puck to actually come online and get that blink dagger. Because prior to that, uh, you kind of need... You need, like, blinking in, you need the dream coil, you need the egg thrown out somewhere where they won't be able to reach thanks to it. And then you might even see a little bit of push from them. Like, you'll have the sustain, you've already got two points from the Shocker Magic. Zenigata managed to get a couple points up here. You know, he's pushing his way over on the sides, trying to keep down this push. And you're not really seeing the tower pushing effect of Spartan. He's got a couple of ganks off, but all the towers, not in too much trouble so far. Just the top lane from the bear, but, I mean, what do you expect? Midas is about to be up on the Lone Druid, though, unless they manage to find a kill in about the next 30 seconds. So, add for them that Radiance timing. Oh, cold snaps onto the Puck Monster Mine, able to jaunt away, so he should be fine. In the meantime, in bottom, Phoenix very deep, taking her dokens, almost just the creeps gonna bring him down. Does Icarus dive away, but we're already seeing the pressure the Chen can exert just alone. Oh gosh, he's gonna drugs. He's trying to kill him. another bear, but it's not looking like he's so lucky. There's gonna be a Sunstrike as well. He hasn't been caught up yet. He manages to pop the Enrage as the Sunstrike comes out, so dodging most of that damage. There will be a Glint coming back out. They still don't have support, and Gadrox, he's trying to heal as he can, but there is not enough coming out of him. 
Although in bottom, they have Duke. Dogs Dog again, they're game. getting another kill on him. There are a lot of heroes kind of DP and Madara and Manson to use that stun. There's also the Forge Creep can fucking away. He draws into the tree lines, but they don't see him, so this may just be good enough. Oh uh -oh. no, they see him. <laughs> oh, the swap to stop him from DPing away. The creeps will end up killing him off. They are not going to be able to do enough with that Icarus dive. And now Pone in the hot seat. Can he find a way out? The kinetic field comes out, and on the side, they get the coddle too. Yes, big overextension. Oh, well, I mean, it's understandable. They know they need to shut down the Invoker. He's closing in on that Midas, so the uh, the more you kill him now, it, it really is going to be helping out your team a lot. It's a little bit more space for Deadrox here. Trying to get in towards that Roshan. He's been kicked out of his own lane, thanks to this lone Druid, who's also got his own Midas. Oh, that's so scary. And up to 400 gold. I mean, even though they've killed the Invoker a number of times, Puck has thrown on the net worth and then in the top five. Oh, I mean, it's swapping between the Ursa and the Invoker, but... The majority of the top five being ad finem. Just Chen things. Just Chen things, but also being behind against a lineup that's going to group up and push you is not where you can afford to be. I'm, try I'm trying to envision like the play that, that is going to happen here, and it has to be based on a random dream foil and an egg, I suppose, is really the only way you get this. And Poe, oh, he's still level four. Yeah, uh, he's gonna take a lot I of came back in. Okay, that was a really interesting spot. Madara actually broke the Dream Coil with that, but now the Kinetic Field gonna catch them out. Sunstrike gonna hit on Pwn, doesn't quite kill him. We're also gonna glimpse back on the Puck Mastermind up to full again. Where is the bear? The bear is still chasing, trying to find anybody, but maybe next time. Not looking to be so dead because Magic Missile up in one. Oh and God, the Kinetic Madara. Field Static Storm goodbye, Gidrox. Really well played there from Madara and his ally. And now I'm not sure they'll be able to find anything on Thug. Man, this Phoenix. Also, the gank from behind, there is a net Chen, gonna take a Sunstrike and a Hadouken, brings him down, and Boca getting the lost hit. Suddenly, we are 10 to 2. We are seeing things begin to spile out of control. Madara, oh, Mastermind looking like he should be able to get away. Prius is going to be fine here. There's a net up in 7 seconds, so the glimpse, meaning he has to be oh, careful. Snap. He doesn't have another Icarus dive. 37 seconds cooldown on that spell, and now he's gonna just have to try and walk away, but Cold Snap's catching him out, and still, Phoenix level 4. Tower destroyed by Lone Druid in the top. This is quickly spiraling out of control for Prius. I think the prioritization from Adfinem shows uh, a total understanding of how like they would potentially lose this game. Because the only way it happens is the Phoenix, right? It has to be some sort of crazy play with the egg. And Phoenix just isn't even effective until level 11. Like, yeah, maybe you have a little bit of a slower offlaner as well in the Lone Druid. But it's so much easier for him to find farm. Like, this Phoenix... The Chen coming in, stopping everything after the dive. They were diving him right into the tower as well. He's level four middle tower at 10 minutes. Attack. Like, this oh. is just not going to work. Boston Mind thinking about going in onto maybe next time. Throws out the silence. One more auto attack should get him. Oh, no, the hand of God <laughs> comes out. And so it will not be one more hit going in. There's going to be a jaunt forward. There's also a coddle blast. One more auto attack. This time gets the kill. But now suddenly Boston Mind maybe not wanting to be up here against the bear. This would... That's not, I think, where they wanted to drop it. It's a bit... I'm not sure what just happened there. A bit sad. Um, I think he meant to use the clarity. Oh, look at this. Oh, they're sneaking the Roshan from the bear. Oh, this is so good. This is like the one comeback potential. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna get it. What do you... Oh, shit, I used the wrong vision for a second there. I was like, what are you on about? Because I switched on the vision to see whether that ward in the top river saw anything. Either way, the bear is uh, now in there. Madara has a stun ready. Suddenly, Gadrok's in a really bad spot. He's going to have to use that enrage pretty early, unfortunately. He's going to try to just run it oh, away, taking so massive amounts of damage. He just needs to turn and fight, get your life steal on, but he's not going to. And Gadrok goes down. Static Storm hitting on Zanny Donna as well as the kinetic field. And now they glimpse back the Bane as well. There's just no hope. Oh, already dead. 15 to 3. Advenum. I don't want to call it, but Advenem so far ahead right now. Uh, the graph hasn't even fully updated quite yet, but that's just another almost 2k gold heading their way, 2100 in total advantage. I'll just put the Aegis on your bear. Sure, why not? Slap that thing up on Lone Druid. Yeah, it's, it is. Um... Hey, we're almost up to the 1k per minute mark. This is generally considered the, the untouchable, the unstoppable. Really and not only that, but look at this lineup. Like, do they really fall off that hard? You have a Lone Druid and an Invoker. Like, you're relying on this snowballing Ursa, a snowballing Puck. It may be a push lineup, but I still feel like their scaling is even going to be better than Priest. 
Yeah, you can maybe argue that the Venge doesn't scale as well as some more traditional carries, but they are just running into a Puck and an Ursa. Puck also someone who doesn't exactly have that scaling carry potential. So, tier 2, probably going to be forfeit as well. They do have the egg ups, and Zenigata does have 3 points in that Illuminate. He's going to drop some out onto the bear, but the swap, the stun, Zenigata going down here, taking a lot of damage, trying to just wander away and walk it off, healing up the Phoenix. There's going to be a nice blind coming out, Zenigata turning to try to drop that damage going out, but Zenigata has fallen. There are a lot of people pretty low here on the side of Ad for them. They need to get the kill, though, maybe next time, so he can get up above the puck, and we can clean up this net worth chart, you know? Get it perfectly in sync be organized by team instead but there will be no contest in this bottom lane and at the meantime they are just trying to pressure towers they do manage to get mid which is something but chen recalls his army and they're going for the high ground this is coming out right now from prius sorry from ad Phenom and prius whether they have anything at all there could be a glimpse back what there is it's looking like kyh in a lot of trouble beaten down immediately 30 seconds respawn time on that and what do they have illuminate here to try and stop the push there's so many units there's gonna be an illuminate there's gonna be a nice egg but no there's level one it's gonna just explode there's a static storm on the rest of them lost of mine not even able to get off that dream coil to do more than a little bit and now get drop swap back in in danger We're gonna try to turn and kill madara but there is no hope here illuminates flying out Four dead on the deck, they have five backs, but even if Prius use them, I'm not sure it's going to amount to anything. And then that yeah, that's it. Uh, well, yeah. Meta wins out again. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the lesson here. <laughs> I think also just adding them really strong right now. We've seen them beat some other tier one teams. They have been playing exceedingly well and i'm really excited to see more from them and see how they can perform so folks with that this is going to be the end of the we play coverage for today there was meant to be an america's game between power friendship and shazam but power friendship has withdrawn from the league uh, their team is disbanded apparently according to their manager so there will be no other games and with that folks we're done that's it my packs that's you're, it you're free <laughs>